question is, can this Lash Rack get off the ground? I'm, I'm not 100% sure that this Lash Rack's going to have a fun time. Well, we're about to figure it out together, my friend, as we get into the second game, the final game for both of these squads here in the group stage on the road to the international. Uh, before we forget, let's do this. Total magic damage by 25 minutes. Who's going to have done the most? XXX. I think XXX, yeah. As well, total number of player deaths at game's end. Oof. I'm saying 26 to 40. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Highest net worth at 10 minutes. Guess who I'm picking on that one? <laughs> <laughs> Ame? Yeah, it's, it's possible. It's possible. And then team in so Ame with all the net worth in the world on the Alchemist, and then I think Extreme Gaming will get more Aegises. I think that's also one detriment I don't like about the 1W lineup. Neither of these teams are great at taking Roshan, uh, but 1Ws... Yeah. They feel a bit more susceptible inside the pitch, you know. Some big roll, Timber Saw coming through, Alchemist getting a big AoE stun. I mean, sure, they do have Primal and Leshrac, but it's not going to be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, they definitely don't take it as fast. The, the Pangolier and the Alchemist can definitely take it a little bit quicker um, for the side of Extreme, so that's probably the one positive that I have. But I feel like if this game is going fast enough, the Roshes won't matter. You know, like, if the Alchemist just hits his, like, 20-minute timing where he's got, like, BKB, Blink, Ratty, like, it's going to be very hard for them to, to, to try and deal with him. And, you know, it's going to be, like, what, basically, like, Blink, probably, like, maybe a Pipe or an XM, um, is what we saw for, from Mal Rain yesterday. XXS can go for things like the, the Blade Mal looks like he's what he's trying to go for early on here. So, if they have those items very early on, I don't think these Roaches are really going to matter all too much, but this is where it really starts and, and kind of ends, I think, for, for, for 1W. You can see pretty straightforward how this Pangolier needs to be the one that unlocks these side lanes. So if you're Chira Jr., you're really just trying to punish any of these movements that come in from XM. Maybe try and take his tower, try and take a bit of extra farm from the side. Cloud is in trouble. Ame channeled up the full duration stun, and Cloud does not have access to the Onslaught. Has Trample trying to get away. And he does not. DY throws in the spear and gets the kill. First blood drawn by Extreme Gaming in the bottom lane. Yeah, cool guys don't look at explosions. That's always my favorite thing about uh, watching these Enchantress players is when they know they get that first blood, they throw it and they're like, yeah, that's all the damage I need. And they, and they just, they, they look around them. Things look cool. So DY starting out nice and strong here. This is a very powerful lane um, with the Enchantress as well as the uh, the Alchemist. Purely just because Acid Spray plus the Enchantress auto attacks are just so hard to deal with. And this is what I touched on, right? Like you, you, you've got this Nyx Assassin who, yeah, is going to be annoying with Mind Flare. But if you're DY, you just go, okay, I'm playing as a Nyx. I'm not going to play with my creeps. I'm going to play all about Impetus. And I'm just going to throw auto attacks at this uh, Primal Beast. And you really just have to try and cut these creeps as much as possible. And this is why we really haven't seen a lot of these uh, double melee lanes all too much. Purely because you, you get into these scenarios here where you have one very strong position five, and it just it just becomes in this kind of pulling scenario where you just have to play such such an awkward way of playing Dota. Mm. Certainly going to take some time before we see the impact of the Nyx Assassin be known. Probably going to have to wait until he gets called up to the top lane. They'll be like, "Hey, bro, lane's pushed up. We can maybe put some pressure onto Shinkyu or something." Mm -hmm. Maybe they There's, can try. You know, and Mm -hmm. Yeah, like as you were saying, like like Zinku is probably the guy they're gonna try and kill. Like, I think once they get level six on Munkushi, they're probably gonna try and get a kill there on XXS. But the question is, is like, if they have won the lane so hard in the bottom side, will DY not just you know make a rotation at the same time as well and kind of just follow mm -hmm. around Sweden strong? So this is kind of the double-edged sword when it comes to playing these kinds of lanes. Is like, yeah, I can make a rotation towards another lane, but if the carry is you know able to kind of just sit in this lane long enough, then doesn't really matter because you're just going to get followed by one of these other supports. Yeah. So bottom going very, very well. We should be seeing a pretty standard build from this Alchemist. I don't expect anything completely off pocket. Mm -hmm. um, he's probably not going to buy that many Aghanim Scepters in this game, right? There's a couple of decent ones, but I don't think they're very high up on the priority list. No, I think it's, I mean, for, for a carry, Alkies definitely has to be one of those scenarios where, like, if you're, like, balling out of control, I don't think there's really many heroes in the game right now that, I don't want to say rely on Ag Scepters, but, like, go from being, like, a, a five-tier hero to, like, a nine just because they have an Ag Scepter where you would want to rush it as a carry. Um, so it, it definitely probably will be a scenario where maybe once he gets six slotted that, that we'll see it. Um, maybe even, like, fourth or fifth item, you could potentially see it if you, if you like you know, like, 
XM really wants it, or you know, maybe maybe Shinku's like begging for it or something. I don't know, man. Like it just it would have to be one of those scenarios where like there would have to be some extenuating circumstances for it to happen. Camp getting stacked up by Shinku, ready to be farmed up by the Alchemist once he has his Radiance ready. See, that's how he gets his Axe, bro. He stacks camps for him, and he says, Ah, oh, mate, remember all those camps I stacked for you? Now give me an Axe. <laughs> you have it in the contract, per every fifth uh, camp, you must buy me, like, one of the items for the Agonims. Ooh. That was a nice dodge there from XSS. Just a little timber chain to get himself away from the, uh, the LSA. I, this is something that I want to talk oh. to the, the Timber Spammers about, about the fast choices. We'll talk about it in a second, because look who come first. You're wondering, is DY going to respond to the rotation? It's the other way around, my friend. DY came first. They're looking to try and bring down Munkushi. So respect saves him with the disruption for now. They end up bringing down DY. Timber Chain misses, but XXX still finds the kill. The question is, does he escape from this? He's trying to, getting himself back. Timber Chain once more, and they do not have the damage to kill him. Shin Q zones them back with the Fade Vault. All right, nice stuff. You lose DY, but the bigger prize is killing off Munkushi in the lane. Yeah, that's exactly what they wanted, right? Um, and you can see this is why the, the Nyx Assassin is strong against those creeps. The the Mind Flare just instantly gets rid of that creep underneath the tower, but Munkushi was already at critical HP. So he did go down, but I'm just kind of circling back to my facet chat. Um, I've seen, I can't remember what the other one is called, but the Infinity Symbol on the, on the, on the Chakram, um, mm. instead of this Shredder one. I just saw it then. It does very minimal damage, but I didn't realize it's slow. So maybe yeah. that's why, like, you see some of these timbers kicking out. I just feel like if you're a timber player, you're like, more damage on my chakram? Hell yeah. Like, why would I not want that? Personally, I like the slow one because it's um, mm -hmm. more effective at more stages of the game. It just allows me to play a little bit differently. I can pull off crazy moves like that, for example. If he doesn't have that slow onto them and he's still underneath the tier one, he definitely dies. Hmm. But under these conditions, you can poke and prod a little bit more. This one is a more like, I think if you're intending to be the big carry of your team, you go for the other one with the bigger damage. But if you're gonna be like a space creator slash um, tank up, anchor person, distraction for the team, I think this one's a little bit better. Yeah, I, I, I definitely, I agree with that. I think it's probably gonna be very situationally based. Cloud takes down DY though on the bottom side, so. He was just trying to just stop a lot of these uh, Top lane. They're trying to go on to XXX here, and they do succeed in doing so. Chira Jr. showed up, they get the kill, and he also has level 3 Diabolic Edict. They're going to put some pressure onto this tower as well, with the Siege Wagon to boot as well. Yeah, so they're probably going to get... I mean, they got most of the way through this tower with that, with that first rotation, so... You don't usually see that much pressure on a tier 1 tower this early on. Usually it's a mid-tower that you're, you know, expecting that rotation, but... You can just see that Cheerio Jr. understands that he wants to be uh, a little bit more of a nuisance in this game. Respect. He has the orb. Oh, oh extra success. Worth. He gets it. And then now Cheerio Jr. is here as well. They're providing in some damage. Going for Shin Q, who tosses them back. They won't be able to kill him off. And now all of a sudden, Cheerio Jr. out of mana and in a bit of a precarious position. XM will follow him with the rotation. Roll up. And they ensure the kill. I can completely understand Respect being there, as they do end up killing off the Rubik at the very end. And Rubik also, or Respect rather, also got the Wisdom Rune. But I don't know what Chiro Jr. was doing here. Yeah. He just stuck around as well, like, a, you know, maybe they were just feeling like they just had enough burst damage to be able to take down anybody who was responding. Not expecting XXS to be in the area either, but beautiful rotation there by XM as well. I was a little sad that he used the Rolling Thunder and didn't get the kill onto the Leshrac, but getting the, the follow-up kill there onto Respect just means it was uh, all the worth for them. And now it's just a, a scenario where you can you can really see that 1W uh, trying to play with that little bit of extra pace. I really like the rotations that they're making from Shiro Jr., but they just need to make sure that they're nice and clean. Maybe they get a kill on XM here. I'm going to try for it in the river, but he does have access to the Shield Crash. Swashbuckle coming back up in 7. Don't think they find this one. This is a spell that needs to, I don't think needs to be changed. I think it needs to be removed from Dota. Shield Crash. It's such a silly <laughs> yeah. ability. Just, yeah, how many times have you looked at a hero like, ah, this Pango, we could maybe go on him, but this, he just presses W, survives anything. What's the point, guys? Such yeah, I think, spell. I, I mean, I, I'm going to sound like a massive contrarian right now. I think barriers were a mistake. Uh, I agree. XXX. Right. He's gonna get disrupted by respect. It's gonna save him for a little bit of time. But fortunately, Sweet and Strong is there with the stun. XM, he jumps into the fray. But like you said, he doesn't have Rolling Thunder. It just came back off cooldown. 
but it comes back a little bit too late. He is dead for sure. If he had roll there and he goes in with all those heroes clumped up, that fight would have looked amazing, but a little bit too impatient on this Pango mid. Yeah, just feeling a little bit uh, tankier than what he was. Unfortunately, he didn't get the uh, the shield crash uh, extra barrier there to, to keep himself alive, but... You can just see that uh, 1W, they understand that the the heroes that they are playing, they need to, to, to set a certain tempo, right? They need to start getting in the face of these heroes. They can't just let Arme, uh, you know, freely sit down and hit creams. Yeah, he's probably going to sit back and farm, but you need to punish the rest of the map for him doing that, right? You can't just... You have to force him into thinking that maybe he needs to be proactive to try and get some more of these objectives, but... They have, they've only taken one tower here, Sam. So, you know, it's like... So I'm medicine in the game, they've taken one T1 tower. I would like to see them with the next catapult wave. Try and see if they can do the same thing they did to top with mid. Just take all five heroes mid. Maybe you leave Munkushi out in the in the in the jungle for a little bit longer because he is so close to that uh, that maelstrom. But just try and send four or five heroes towards a two one tower. Just really force extreme to try and make some of these rotations. He's got some good deep wards as well. He's got good deep vision here from Sweden strong as well. So it's going to be a great opportunity now for for the one whales to try and take some more of these towers. Sweden Strong was going on hunting, maybe hoping to find DY here in the trees. Unfortunately, will not be the case. And DY is very safe underneath some sentry wards. In fact, Sweden Strong walks underneath a ward sentry combo, so x knows that he's coming. Will easily be able to get away from this one. And a little bit unfortunate. That's also something that you have to worry about when it comes to XG. For the longest time, right? DY was the ward guy. Literally, Chinese players would make guides on how to ward like DY in particular. And in this game, when you're playing an invis hero like the Nyx Assassin, you're going to find out very quickly how annoying it can be dealing with this vision. And now bottom though, Cloud goes in, they bring in respect, they're hoping for the first kill they have in the game onto Ame and they do get it. He threw out the stun before he died though, but Mukushi comes in through the twin gate, threw out the Laguna Blade, but it might end up being a mistake. As Cloud, he's the first on the fall, taken out by XXX, XM finding the stun onto respect. They want the Shadow Demon, but he's still alive for now. XM will kill him off with the Swashbuckle Shield Crash combo. Munkushi, he came back, laying in some damage from the high ground. They bring down XXX, DY. One more right click will bring him down too. All of a sudden, XM feeling very, very isolated where he's at, but not isolated enough because he at least kills the Lina on the way down. Ends up being a chaotic bloodbath in this bottom half of the map. But nonetheless, we do have a victory overall for the 1W lineup. Yeah, it's exactly what I wanted to see from them, right? I just want to see them just kind of throw heroes at this alchemist, throw heroes at these towers and just force reactions from Extreme because they're such a, a high tier and such a, a, a strong team that if you just allow them to kind of play their own game, they're just going to choke out the map for you, right? Like, they're just going to take it, whatever they want. They're going to get this network lead. They're going to be able to out team fight you in the middle part of the map. And you're the ones that need to be aggressive. Oh, thank you. He's tanky. Thank you. Surprisingly tanky. And ended up stealing... Well, it doesn't matter. He's dead. Took them a little bit longer than they thought. Hey man, fluffy hat makes the difference. <laughs> he has a thousand HP. He's, he's actually a lot tanker than I thought, but this is exactly what I wanted to see from, from the wider Wales. I want to see them just keep going forward. Shira Jr. has bought a blink dagger first on the left track. So this just goes to show that they're in this mentality of it is time for us to just go hard. You know, like mm. extremely already have locked up first place. At this point, you're probably, I think, not even able to get yourself out of this uh, bottom two for this group either if you're, if you're the one worse considering what they're one and four now so this is all about them just trying to, to find a little bit of source and and seeing that that sweet spot of pace and over aggression that they want to try and hit because we touched on it at the top of this broadcast this this tournament is going to be about speed and it's going to be about who has that uh that fine line between farming and still being extremely fast on the map mm. Cloud with the credit for the tier 1 tower bottom, he's going to start building in towards a BKB. Now the supports for one dub come to the top lane, hoping to defend their own tower. I think this is also an integral part of them winning this game. Defending their towers and making sure that this, when they eventually are ready to fight on the side of XG, denying them places where it makes sense for them to make those rotations. Now top lane, XM is going to get caught out here. Does he have enough to survive? Goes into the rolling thunder, but there's too much AoE damage from Shira Jr. Well done from him. And this Blink Dagger already starting to pay itself dividends, man. Yeah, that was just a, the, a nice little rotation there from Sweden. Strong. I wasn't 100% sold that they were going to be able to get that kill because I wasn't sure if Shiro Jr. was able to get there. Dude, this, this Blink already again. 
without the blink, they can't catch DY, but he can blink on top of him, split earth him. He gets stunned up. They're looking for Shin Q as well. Cloud wants to find the Pulverize on the edge of the tier two tower. They get it and they will be able to blow him up. Munkushi Jr. or Munkushi just already working on the tier one tower mid. And game two looking markedly different from game one for the one dub group. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just all about pace, right? Like you, you look at the lineup for Extreme and they, they don't really have that great reactionary heroes. Like Timber's not really, you know, one of those heroes if, if he's, you know, not at that point where he's very scary. The Alchemist definitely isn't going to be a hero that wants to react. And same with the Enchanter. She's not really a hero that kind of TPs in in terms of fight for you. So they're just really kind of doing a good job of just identifying the, the power spikes that they have for their heroes and, and really being able to win a lot of these fights. XM wants to go Trying in to though. Trying to force a fight middle. They were hoping to go into Chira Jr. But Cloud was in the trees, came out with the Onslaught tramples down XM and the Pangolier is dead. Sweden uh, Strong should still die though. An impetus shot connects onto him. And XXX considering the chase going forward. Ahmed throws out the stun but they are realizing that without having XM available they just don't have the disables necessary to take these kind of fights. Yeah, they, they, they're trying to get a lot of this counter aggression back, right? They're like, okay, Munkushi is not around here. They're a little bit low on the mana and the HP. They've probably got a few spells on cooldown. Let's try it. See if we can get a fight going. Considering now that Ame has this uh, Blade Mail as well as the Radiance, they've got a lot of Blade Mails in this game. Um, just trying to reflect a lot of that damage that comes in from Chira Jr. But they, they understand that they've kind of hit this small little item timing where they're like, okay, we're pretty strong with our Alchemist on Ame, so we want to see if we can try and get him involved in these fights, see if he gets a kill. Doesn't work out. They lose XM again, who, I mean, I, I you know, fanboying a little bit at the start, XM was, was set up for a very strong game, but uh -oh. as soon as that mid-game happened, it didn't turn out. Yeah. Check out Munkushi. Able to get a pretty big kill right now onto the Timber Sword. So that's XXX being delayed even further. Munkushi getting stronger. And this Lina. Lina, late game, man. They don't actually have any answers on the side of XG. We're going to get to that point in the game where you can kill the Pangolier during his role. You know, you can just magic burst through the Timber Sword and Alchemist. We've seen how Alchemist fares up against these late game range carries. And it's, it's definitely not well. Yeah, it's... it's going to be one of those scenarios, especially because they've got a lot of good heroes at uh, being able to save her and get her those resets as well. So, DY. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that was a spicy one there. I, I saw the blink in the corner of my eye and DY was just around the corner. I want to try and fight with Ame, though. Okay, not. Um, but yeah, I, I do agree with you, right? It, it's going to get to a point where XM is going to be the guy that needs to be in front of him. As soon as you get to me, it won't really matter. Uh, Speaking of XM, he's dying like he's a support right now. Mostly softened up by Sweden Strong. Cloud was just there for the cleanup duty. So when you're starting to get soloed by the enemy position 4 practically, yeah. Uh, things are not looking so hot for XG in this mid lane. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's gotten to the point where he went for this blade mail to try and be tanky in these fights, but he just, he, he isn't tanky in these fights anymore, you know? Like, in the first couple of fights that he had it, he was reflecting a decent amount of damage, but there's just so much burst that can come out now from, from the one whales that it's going to be all too hard for him to try and survive with this blade mail, and he's really going to be on kind of recovery mode going for this blink dagger to see if he can try and uh, get some of these fights in the middle part of the game, but I, uh, you know, kind of all eggs in, in the army basket now for extreme. Do you think uh, he should have just went for blink dagger first instead of swapping over for the blade mail? I mean, I, th I think the Blade Mail is, is a good choice in the game, but I, I think there was just too many fights that just went bad for them. Like that, that fight where, you know, XM, he came in, he was the first one to get gone on, and then he respawned, and then he basically instantly TP'd back towards the mid lane and died, like, straight again. Like, that was kind of when, when the Blade Mail felt bad. Like, two deaths in rows is too many. <laughs> Steven Strong has a dig on already on this next Assassin. XXX jumping in on top of him, but here comes Cloud. Beautiful onslaught into the Pulverize, onto this Timber. Not dead just yet. But eventually will as he gets trampled into the death. XM rolling around, trying to at least break up this fight somewhat. Realizing as the roll expires that he needs to get the hell out of here. So they committed roll, they committed the... Um, oh no, just roll, okay, nothing else is committed. Mm -hmm. Just roll, it's not so bad. Yeah, and, and in that fight, we kind of see the problem that you have now with rolling thunder when you're a little bit behind against these save heroes. Like, he understood that he had to just try and commit for a kill and get the kill on the Sweden strong, but all it takes is a disruption. You know, like, your respect is just sitting well without a range. He just puts a disruption in. Sweden strong sits inside of it. Rolling Thunder has to roll away and 
at that point, he, he bounces into Chiro Jr., who then gets bounced on the high ground, and you're like, well, okay, fight's kind of over at this point, so things are not really looking up for three. XXX showed up to the bottom lane. As soon as he peeks his head out into some vision, the rest of one dub is there. They eviscerate him. I must say, the difference in this game, when respect is around, just being able to save people, elongate this fight, frustrate extreme gaming, has been night and day. And Cloud, fresh off of helping to get a kill on bottom, has already moved towards middle, trampling down onto the Rubik. They blink onto DY as well with Chira Jr. Three heroes are gone off the map in the blink of an eye here, Fluke. Yeah. <laughs> Confidence is key, man. Like, it, it, this is what it's like in, in any sport and in, in, even in esports. When you come into a tournament like this, the shackles have been removed. You know, one Wales, they, they came into this series like, okay, if we get ourselves a 2 0, we can start looking towards potentially being in the top two for our group. They lost that first game, they go, all right, stuff it. There's not much else left for us to lose. Let's just play fast, let's play our kind of Dota. And this is the, the, the one W that we're expecting. Yeah, this is what I wanted to see from them. Now the question is, can they save Cloud here? He's in his BKB, it doesn't seem like Extreme Gaming have that much interest in chasing him. They find the LSA onto DY. The Enchantress setting up the fight, Munkushi pops a BKB to avoid the Rolling Thunder. He's just gonna TP out, doesn't want anything more to do with this fight. Respect though, he will get tagged in by the Rolling Thunder. Can he get out of here? Delays proceedings with the disruption, but unfortunately, his death is secured. And then to soul disruption as well onto the Rubik. I suppose it's still nice for XG to get that kill, but that was not easy and they didn't get the most high value target either. Yeah, it would have been nice for them to, to try and get their kill there onto Cloud, but you know, the BKBs are just a little bit too strong. They are starting to wear thin a little bit here. XXX. Uh, what was uh, he doing got a there? little bit too... I don't know. Ame ch channeling the stun, but he doesn't have a blink dagger, so he can't get in. Now he's stunned himself. Chira Jr. has the split earth, but doesn't want to actually let it wind out. I'm very surprised that they chose not to approach that. They had Polarize, you had Onslaught, Uproar's available. I feel like they could have gotten that kill. Yeah, they just didn't quite have vision on some of these other other heroes just yet. And obviously with Munkushi showing himself in towards that middle lane, he didn't want to try and overcommit just yet. Did not have a, uh, a, a TP either to try and link up with the team. So, you know, 1W, they're showing a little bit of that restraint that we're hoping to see from these guys as well. And, and just shows that they are not letting the, the occasion get to themselves just yet. They're playing nice and crisp Dota. They're playing nice and mm. fast, but they're not over-aggressing, which is a big thing that can happen sometimes when you get in towards these games is you're starting to, you know, dominate a team like extremely. Like, nobody else has beaten these guys just yet in our group. We're doing so well, guys. Let's go. And that's kind of what happened to Heroic, right? They got a little bit too big for their boots in some of these fights, and then they end up just losing out a little bit later on. So doing a good job of just keeping this game nice and consistent, keeping themselves in that driver's seat and really forcing XG to, to make some of these uh, bad decisions. Aegis now in tow for Munkushi. I would have preferred it on the Leshrac. I think Leshrac is like top five of the best ones, but Lina can still be pretty good with this Aegis. 7k net worth lead for themselves. Yes, Ame is obviously the highest net worth in the game, but the rest of his cores is just not really able to contribute that much. And he's being hunted by Sweden Strong, but there aren't any heroes nearby. I think he'll be fine. Yeah, with no left track, with no Lena. It's kind of just a uh, scouting mission right now. Don't have all too much uh, coverage of the uh, the old sentry ward combination for this Nyx Assassin. They do have a decent amount of sentries that are floating around in key little areas for them, but... They've done a really good job for the, the side of the one whales to try and get rid of a lot of this vision here, just try and give Sweden strong those clean avenues. You can see there was a, a nice little line that he was able to make from you know the bottom T1 all the way through towards the triangle where he knew that he was completely A-OK. -okay. Mm. That was a, that was just a, a very small miss there onto what was it, DY that was in the in the trees. Mm -hmm. Also, you know they took the Tormentor on one win, and the fact that the one dub has this Tormi, it went towards the next assassin. If they find Enchantress Timbersaw, who have already been struggling with staying alive in general, now you get hit by the Vendetta with the break, whew, you're gonna die really, really fast. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of damage, so... It's gonna be very scary for these supports to try and keep themselves away from the Nyx Assassin, considering they don't really have the, uh, the most control of the lanes just yet, because Respect is doing such a good job of just being able to solidify a lot of these areas they want to try and play around with. Sweden Strong's about to pick up a Dagon 3 as Munkushi finishes off the tier 2 tower bottom. 
They smoke up immediately. They want to go punish somebody. And it's good old DY right in front of us. And DY now does see the smoke break onto Cloud, but they don't know in which direction he's at. Hiding in this little alcove. And he's just chilling. This is one of those you just like, you're hiding underneath the bed. You're like, please don't look. Please don't look. Yeah. Please don't look. And it's like one of the gambles that the cloud has to make as well, right? Because there are so many crevices for you to try and hide in that he's just like, I'm going to onslaught in on one direction or another. And if I find you, I find you. If I don't, whatever. He's also picked up the Ag Scepter as well here on the Primal Beast. And now with the uh, gem up on Chiro Jr. They're really starting to put themselves in a very dominant position to try and end this game. BKB fully completed as well as the boots travel for Monkushi. So they're at a position now for the, the side of the, the one whales that they are kind of hitting their critical mass where they still have a little bit of room to grow, but it's definitely strong enough for them to start cracking into this high ground. Maybe with the next Aegis. Two minutes left on this one though. Still a bit of time. It's probably going to be one of those farming agencies. They'll use the time to just farm up. Maybe Chiro Jr. can start building into getting his Bloodstone as well. He already has the BKB available. Mm -hmm. You feel really strong at that point. But there's no rush for them, right? They're the ones... If you're at this stage of the game, ahead against Alchemist, there's no rush. You know that this guy will never come back. He'll never be strong enough to really contest you. So take your time. Farm up your items. Don't worry about it too much. Yeah, it's it's a position where you you know that XXS as well as XM have also had to to go for these much more team focused. Oh, okay, that's a DY. Uh, much more team focused kind of builds, right? You know, XXS doesn't really have that much damage just yet. He's gone for this pipe as well as Akaya and XM blink blade now. So it's gonna be a little while until those heroes start to come online. You only really have to worry about Arme, and I think at this point you're more than happy to try and take that fight if you're more cushy. So. Hmm. You're in a, a very good position for the one whale, so just take down these uh, these outer towers and maybe you can try and have a sniff for the high ground. You have to be very, very careful of just being caught out by like a rolling thunder, but as long as Sweden's strong to try and find some more of these picks, things get scary. Uh -oh. XM trying to roll himself away. He'll succeed in doing so, and XXX, he was in front of the tower. Mukushi opted to go towards XM instead, so both of them will end up surviving. Yeah. Still, though, it kind of sucks that at this stage of the game, these are the only plays you can do. Distract them, try and create space and time. And sadly, I think it would be one thing if it was an SF that you have, if you're the one that have the Lina. I still keep coming back to the fact that it's Alchemist, man. An Alchemist that yeah. also doesn't have Blink Dagger, so how does he even get into these fights? We've seen him so many times in this game. He'll run up, waddling there, wants to throw the Concoction, but one dub have hero, two heroes that are always sitting very far back in the Lina and the Lash. One hero that is super mobile, one hero that's invis, and one hero that saves. It's such a hard game without the Blink Dagger to find your targets in these engagements. Yeah, he needs some sort of mobility because I feel like it is basically Arme's job to try and jump into the back and take down respect. Because, you know, you're looking at XM, I think he really just kind of needs to, to roll around and try and cause a bit of chaos in the front line so the Leshrac as well as Alina don't just have this kind of free reign. And then they can start to, to buy a little bit of that extra time for Arme to get these extra kills. So. Without that blink dagger thing, is it going to get a little weird? Uh, Arme just clicked out of smoke, so... Oh no. Oh no. They know that Arme was smoked, at least. Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem like this particular smoke is going to go anywhere. Maybe they just want to lay out some vision in the meantime. Uh, we just had a Dagon 4 arriving for the Nyx Assassin. That is the first Dagon 4 of the tournament. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's not the last from Sweden Strong. Let's go, baby. I, I was, like, obviously, you know, Dagon 1 is a very important item for the next assassin. It is, it is the build these days. So that's when you usually see uh, some transitions, like you see, like, a Blink Dagger, Four Star, Solar Crest, Glimmer. But Sweden understands that this game is naturally going to slow down because actually you want this game to slow down. So going for a full Dagon means that he 100% has a lot of these solo pickoffs and doesn't need his teammates to try and come in and provide that extra bit of damage. So that can... can kind of turn this game in on its head. Bro, he also just picked up a ceremonial robe as his neutral item. That is perfect. Down bottom, Sweden Strong. Look who he's found. It's DY. That That's is that. a dead Enchantress. Woo! Like you mentioned, the solo kill potential is there. The fight is still breaking out down bottom, though. Cloud going in with the onslaught towards Arme. They found the big carry. He activates his BKB, but it's not going to matter. Munkuji is here as Cloud holds him with the pulverize. And Ame is dead, 70 seconds, no buyback for the Alchemist. No buyback, no BKB. 
no nothing. And this is kind of just the way that the game went, right? Like, you were looking at this XG draft, like, yes, this Alchemist can provide you with a, a little bit of tempo to try and play around with, but it was all about this Pangolier because you had this Timber and the Alchemist who were not going to move around as cause. And XM, unfortunately for him, yes, it was a half-decent start against the Leshrac, but Chira was just able to make much better rotations to what XM was. He was the one that was being aggressive, right? Like, we saw him make that first rotation towards the top. He got themselves a couple of kills. Yeah, Chira lost his life, but there's so much extra network. Munkushi could be caught out here, but uh, they just don't have the damage without the Alchemist. XM committed the full Rolling Thunder for this one. Can they get anything out of it? No, they cannot. They have to retreat onto the high ground, and here comes Cloud, ready to punish them. They find DY first and foremost, kill him off without buyback. They still could reach for more respect. Disruption out onto the Timber Soul. But they're just using the time to beat down onto the tier 3 tower. They are about 30 minutes for, in. For Ame to come back though. You have to be mindful of that. I think you get the tier 3. I'm not sure about the racks. Shira Jr. though blinks up. BKB active. Just goes straight onto Shin Q. And the stun comes back onto him. But he's got that debuff immunity. So Ame can't do anything with the concoction. And now... They're just watching Munkushi deal with the base as XXX dies in the blink of an eye. XM going in, hoping to do something. Ame can't even get to the fight. Pulverize will stun him up right next to XM. XM already gone. Ame will throw out the stun, but it's not really going to make a difference. Already zoned back into the fountain. Cloud though, taking quite a bit of damage from DY. These impetus shots are no joke. But still, nobody from one dub is dead. And now, wow, DY. Suffering the wrath of Sweden Strong as he picks up a Dagon freaking five. Let's go, <laughs> baby. Yeah, Sweden Strong's had a very, very strong game on the six assassin. I think everybody for for the one Wales have definitely pulled something out for, for this last game. And this is just so freeing to see because these guys, you know, going into a couple of tournaments this year, they're able to qualify for ESL one Birmingham. Weren't able to get there over to some visa issues. They had a few couple of uh, good tournament showings. You know, they had uh, a good showing in their own tournament sake as well, where they had a pretty good group stage against the likes of Game Gladiators and Team Spirit. Mm. Now coming into TI, which is probably one of the biggest tournaments they have qualified for ever. He goes to show that these guys are still here to party. They're potentially going to finish their group stages off with, what, two and four? That's pretty respectable. It's not all too bad. Still is probably going to mean that they will be picked by a team in a different group, but mm. it just goes to show that they, they know how to play fast, right? They know how to play one of their strategies, which is the slash rack, which has been something they've been very, very good with in the past. So it does give us uh, a nice little uh, indicator that these guys are, are not just going to be, you know, zero six Andes and just be out of the tournament yeah. without showing their worth. Smoke up, Extreme Gaming taking potentially their final roll of the dice here in this game. They've already secured top seed in Group A, but would certainly like to make it a perfect group. Ame, in a bit of an awkward position. Chira Jr. blinks in first, looking towards DY. Ame pops his BKB, but he gets stunned before the BKB came out, so he lost most of his HP. He is dead without buyback. XM gonna try his best. They're stunning up Chira Jr., but no, Chira Jr. got pushed onto the high ground. So this Leshrac, free to just dish in magic damage without getting touched. Munkushi is also throwing in as many right clicks as possible. And as all the XG heroes die, the GG is called. One dub will get the one dub, prevent XG from having a perfect group, and give themselves confidence leading into the seeding stage.